Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Survival Let's Play. And I've got the Steve skin on today because for some reason it's not letting me use my regular skin. And you've just seen a quick time lapse of me collecting some cobwebs. Now this is a cobwebs that I managed to get. I also got a, I think another stack or two as well. And the reason I was collecting these is because I was going to make some map art for this episode. So this is the start of it here. But I realised it's just going to take too long to do. And you can see I've got a few cobwebs in there. I've also got plenty of other materials that I collected. But luckily a lot of this stuff I just had laying around the base. I built the wool farm a few episodes ago. I collected loads of terracotta I think last episode. Maybe the episode before. So I had loads of that. And then most of the other stuff I just had laying around the base. Like the gold from the gold farm. Uh, more wool and terracotta. And a little bit more wool. So luckily I had most of these resources, but I had to go and collect the spider webs or the cobwebs. So like I said, I was going to make some map art in this episode, and this was the start of it. But I'm looking at it on the actual map here, and it doesn't really look like it's supposed to. There's a few of the colours that are a little bit different to how they're supposed to look. Like if you look towards the top a little bit, you can see some yellow, and that's actually birch wood. So if I fly up and try land on some birch wood, you can see... That it's supposed to be like white like this but if you look on the map you can see it and it's more of a yellow color and I don't really understand why it looks like that it's supposed to be white on the map so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep going with this one or if I'm going to tear this down and try and start again so that's the reason that I'm not going to be doing that in this episode and the reason why all of the blocks are at different heights like this is to create a bit of shade on the map so if you look here right at the bottom left which is where I'm standing now you can see that even though all of these blocks here are grey, the first like 8 or 9 blocks, on the map you can look at it and they're slightly different shades of grey, even though it's the exact same colour. So that's the idea with having all of the different blocks at different heights. But I just don't really like how it's turning out right now. So I'm going to take a break from this and hopefully I can fix it later on. And the reason I'm doing this is because I hit 10k followers on TikTok. And I said when I got to 10k followers, I would build a giant map art of one of my followers' comments. Uh, the comment that won was Kobe. So I'm going to be building him here. Uh, it doesn't really look how I want it to look right now. But I definitely will come back and hopefully I can sort it out at some point. So I've also done a little bit more work on the docks in between episodes. So I started this two episodes ago now. And I just tried to get like the general shape of the whole thing in place. And I said that I was going to have a little extension going out here. So this is what I did in between episodes. You can see the design that I've gone for here. I kind of like how it turned out. I do think I could probably add a little bit more detail somewhere as well though. And I've tried to add little bits of detail over here. So I've got some wood that is kind of getting held down by the rails. Like just some chests around here. I've got a few barrels with a chest. And then some hay over here with a few chests again. I'm thinking I could add maybe some pumpkins here, uh, some melons and stuff over here as well. And this is all just going to be cargo. So the plan is to have like an entrance here and this is going to go onto the ship. So I'm going to build quite a big ship here. And then all of these items are either getting transported onto the ship or they've just come off the ship. I'm not really sure. But that's the plan and I think it should look quite good when it's done. And you can't really notice this from above, but I brought all of the stone from the walls all of the way down to the ocean floor. So in the last episode it was just like floating around. I've just connected it to the floor to make it look a little bit better. But there's still a lot more details that I want to add to the wall as well. And of course I'm going to remove stuff like that. So yeah, it's just a work in progress really. It's going to take me quite a few episodes to get it all done. And I'm actually having a little bit of a problem here. So this is where the docks end. And then this is where the grass starts. And at the moment it's just a big straight line in between the two. It looks really bad and I'm not entirely sure how to fix this. Uh, maybe I could build a few buildings on here. 
or something like that. I'm not really too sure. But I definitely need to work something out for this. So I've also added some grass down the sides. Uh, this was just to blend it in a little bit to try and make it look a little bit more natural around here. Uh, it's coming along okay so far, but there's definitely more work I need to do on this. I'm thinking I could probably extend this out by a little bit, then bring all of this out by a little bit more. I'll add some sand around here, and then of course I can't leave it floating like this. So I'll need to connect it all to the ocean floor as well. But I'm not really very good at landscaping like this. I think I'm okay at building, even though it takes me quite a long time to come up with the designs. But when it comes to landscaping, I just don't really know what I'm doing, so it's probably going to take me quite a long time to get this fully finished. You can see there's quite a lot of work to do as well because there's stuff like this all over the island. But yeah, I think it should look pretty good when I'm done. But anyway, now I've shown that, I can get on with what I want to do in today's video. So in the last episode, I mentioned a kelp farm. And I asked everyone if they're okay with me building a zero tick kelp farm in this episode. Uh, that's been out like two days now, so I've been reading through all of the comments. And every single person said it's fine, just build a zero tick kelp farm. Nobody said no. So that's what I'm going to be doing in today's episode. So I was looking for some designs last night on YouTube. And I found one that I liked. And I tested it out on a creative world. And it's probably too efficient if anything. But I'm going to be building it anyway. But I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do the storage. Because this thing is producing like 72,000 kelp an hour. But I'm going to build it anyway. I've got most of the resources in my redstone shulker here. I'm also going to need a little bit of glass. Or glass panes. And then I'm going to need some sand as well. So I'm going to get all of the resources together that I'm going to need. And I'm just going to head over to the farming district and build this thing. Okay, so I actually just went ahead and finished the whole thing. So it was pretty simple to build. It took like 5 to 10 minutes. There's not too much redstone and it's quite compact. You also don't need too many resources. You can see there's like a few pistons, some sand, a tiny little bit of redstone here. So you could probably build this after like probably half an hour on a survival world. So I'm not going to go through exactly how to build this thing in this episode. But I will leave a link in the description to the tutorial that I followed. It's very simple to build. And if I turn it on here, you can see it working. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. But this piston here tries to pull this sand back and forth. And then this sand here tries to fall. But it can't. And then there's some kelp on top of that sand right there. And if I head up here, you can see all of the kelp's just instantly growing and getting harvested. And then it goes into these chests here. I think that one there's broke, but if I turn it off and then turn it back on again, you can see the water's fixed again, so the kelp's growing. So it's not the most stable farm ever. But anyway, what I want to do now is extend the storage. So these chests fill up too quickly. So what I want to do is have a few more hoppers and chests going downwards. And then at the bottom, I want to have them all going into some smokers. So then I can cook all of the kelp and turn it into dried kelp. And that's a pretty good fuel source. So I'm just going to quickly add some more chests here. So I've added some extra storage down here. So there's five double chests on each row. And then the hoppers as well. So it's not going to fill up as fast. But this will still probably fill up in like an hour. And if I head down to the bottom you can see that I've got some smokers in here. So all of the kelp is going to come down. And go straight into all of these smokers. And right now I'm going to use some blaze rods for the fuel. So I'm quickly going to fill all of these up with blaze rods. And behind here I've got some chests and some hoppers leading into the back of the smokers. And this is where all of the fuel is going to go. So I'm going to fill this up manually. And I'm just going to wait till I've got a lot of dried kelp and then turn it all into blocks. And I'm going to try and put as much as I can back here. And this will just make sure that the smokers always have fuel. So that's all of the technical side of the farm done. All I've got to do now is decorate the place down below, maybe make it look a little bit better above. But like I said, I don't really want to spend too much time on this project, because it is probably going to get fixed soon and it won't work anymore. So there's no point of spending hours and hours making this place look good, just for it to get broken in a couple of months. So yeah, I will build a storage room, but I'm not going to spend loads of time doing that. So before I finish the storage room, I've decided to come over here to the nether. And I'm going to do a quick session of mining for some ancient debris. 
So this is the area that I usually do it in. I've got my TNT in here. I made plenty in, I think, like two episodes ago. I've also got the flame bow. So I've gone through this quite a lot of times before. And I'm just going to get straight on with it. So from that little session I managed to get 34 Ancient Debris overall, I've smelted it down here into Neverite Scrap and I've also got 44 here that I already had in my Valuable Shulker, so I've smelted this down as well, so that's another 44 and I've also got 41 in here from a while ago, I don't really know when I got this but it's just been building up in my Shulker box here, so I've got another 41 there, so that's almost 2 stacks overall I'm going to go to a crafting table and turn this into ingots I can get 29 and I could turn this into netherite blocks and check some more off the checklist but I'm actually not going to do that so instead I'm just going to store all of this in my valuable shulker for now so I've got 36 ingots and free scrap there's still a long long way to go I think I've only got like six netherite blocks in the storage room and I was actually going to craft some lodestone so that's why I've got some chiseled stone brick but I'm not going to do that just yet I think I'm just going to keep it in the shulker box so I think for one episode I might just have to spend the entire week just in the nether getting ancient debris. Otherwise it's going to take me probably like two years to get the full stack of netherite blocks. So I might have to do that at some point soon. But anyway now I'm going to head back over to the farming district and I'm going to finish the kelp farm. So I've made a little bit of a storage room here. It's not really anything special. It only took me like 20 minutes to put this together. And you can see that I've got all of the smokes on this side. I've got some hoppers going from underneath the last smoker around here and then they're all going into these chests back here so this is where all of the kelp is getting stored and I'm storing all of the kelp blocks over here in this shulker box and I've actually already filled two shulker boxes full of this stuff so this is one of them and the other one's back at the base I'm going to try to fill quite a few of these and then I'll have enough dried kelp blocks to last me the entire series. So I want to make a super smelter and stuff and it's just going to be very useful to have loads of this to uh, use as fuel. So I'm going to try to get quite a lot of it and this farm should help me get a lot of it pretty easily. And I didn't really think it was worth it to use the kelp blocks to smelt the kelp here. So I've decided to change it to bamboo. So if I head behind you can see that I've got a zero tick bamboo farm back here. Now this is pretty much the same design as the kelp farm, it's just without the water, so here it is. Uh, all of these just instantly grow, get harvested, go into the hoppers, and they go down here, and then into the back of the smokers right here. So this just saves me a lot of the kelp blocks. So I will leave a link for the tutorial for the bamboo farm down in the description as well. And uh, it's actually the same guy who built the kelp farm that built this bamboo farm. Like I said, it's pretty much the same design, you just don't need the water. And I know that I'm going to get quite a lot of comments saying that I can turn this into an XP farm. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this episode, I might do it in another episode. I think it's quite easy to do though, I just need to break that stair there. If I broke this sea lantern and then I could place a lever on the side of that block right there, then I think if I turn that lever on, it would lock this hopper. So the dried kelp wouldn't be able to get sucked out. So then all I would have to do is wait for some dried kelp to be in this hopper. And then pull it out with my hand. And then it would give me all of the XP from all of the kelp that has come through there. So it's quite simple to do. But I'm not going to be doing it in this episode. I probably will do it in a later episode. But anyway I've been recording this clip for about 2 minutes. And all of this kelp has built up already. So it's very fast and efficient. And I'm probably going to be down here quite a lot over the next few days just to see how much dried kelp blocks I can get. So I'm going to head back to the base now and I need to make sure to turn the farm off or it will break. Now I think the kelp farm's already been turned off. Yeah, so I can head back to the base and there's a few more items I can check off the checklist. So I've got a few items here that I can check off the checklist. So we'll start off with all of the different kelp stuff. So the dried kelp goes in random blocks. So that's 64 of them. Um, the dried kelp is the food source. So we'll put it in the food chest right there. And then the kelp goes in the plants. So there's already one in there. 
and we'll put another 63 in there. And there's also a few other items here. So the cobwebs I got at the start of the episode, and the string and the rotten flesh I've had for ages but I've just not checked off the checklist yet. So I made a mob farm in the third episode of this series, but at the time I didn't have this checklist room built, so I never checked them off the checklist, and then when I built it I just kind of forgot. So I'm going to do that now, and all of these items go in the mob drops. So there's cobwebs, string, and rotten flesh, so all of those are up to a stack. So I'm actually quite close to completing this chest now, there's not too many more items. I'm going to have to build a rabbit farm and a turtle farm at some point, and maybe a drown farm to get these shells. And I've already got lots of spider eyes, I just need the mushrooms. So I should be able to complete this one pretty easily. So next up for this episode, I want to do a little bit of work over here at the docks. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing, but I know that I want to build a boat right here. Uh, I also might get to work up here a little bit, I'm not really too sure, but I might build the first market store. Like I said, I'm not really too sure, but I definitely want to build the boat here. So I'm going to get on with that, and then if I've got any inspiration afterwards, I'll do a little bit of work up here as well. So I've made some progress over here, and you can see that I've got the boat in place. I'm kind of happy with how it turned out, but I do think I could probably add a little bit more detail to it. And I've decided to go for the roof on this one. I was going to put a sail in the middle somewhere, like there, and going upwards. But I just couldn't make it look good, it just looked a bit too big and bulky, because the boat is so small. But overall I am pretty happy with how it turned out. This is the first ever boat that I've built in Minecraft. It was kind of hard to get the right shape, because it's only a small boat. I'm pretty happy with it overall. But this is only the first boat that I've built, and I do want to have quite a lot more scattered around in the water. So if you don't know, my base here is built on an island, so it's completely covered by water, or surrounded by water. And I just want to have quite a lot of different boats and ships just around the place. So if you're over here, you can always just see one in the distance somewhere. But it's going to take me quite a while to come up with loads of different designs. But this is the first one I came up with. I definitely do think that I could improve it. So if anyone's got any ideas on how I could improve it, or just add little details to it, just let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I like any of your suggestions. And up here you probably noticed the market stalls. So I've got four of them here. And I designed these over a year ago and I built them on my other world before it got corrupted. And I decided that I wanted to build them somewhere on this island. And I thought this would be quite a nice place to build them. I've also got some random little details like this around. So this is supposed to be a little cart. Then over here, I've just got some random chests and barrels. So I want to add a few more little details like that around here as well. But I don't want it to go too overboard and just have stuff like this everywhere. So I need to figure out a way to add little details like this, but not to make it look too bad. There's something else that I quickly want to show here. And if anyone's watched the entire series, you will have seen this before. So this is just a 4x4 map of my island can see all of my little islands around as well and I made this on like the first day on this world so the island is pretty much untouched it's got all of the trees and stuff and then it's got these two ponds which I removed later on there's a little bit of water there which I must have removed so yeah it's pretty much untouched apart from the top so that's my little starter house my farm my enchantment table and then I think I had a little um, cow farm there as well so this was after the first day on the world. And then a few weeks later I made this one here. I can't remember if I ever showed this one on camera or not. But you can see I've made quite a lot of progress since the first map. So I removed all of the trees. I flattened out a lot of the land but you can see I still needed to do a little bit here. And a little bit up at the top. But the main thing here is that I started to line out the base. So this is just the top layer. I didn't actually start digging any of it at this point. I don't even think I had my chests in place at this point. I was still using my starter house. But yeah, this is when I first started making the base. So I think I made this map about 6 months ago. And if I go to the right again, you can see the updated one. So this isn't actually completely accurate at the moment because I made this about a week ago now. So you can see that all of the stuff I've done in this episode, like the boat and the market stalls and the uh, pier over there, that's not actually on this map yet, 
and you can see the land here is a mess where on here it's all flat for now so it's not completely up to date but this is the most recent one that I've done so it doesn't really look like I made too much progress compared to the last one but I did spend a long time digging out all of the base and then doing all of the different rooms and stuff in there as well so even though it doesn't look like I've made too much progress I did make quite a lot of progress on the base but you can see that I removed the starter house and all of the other stuff that was at the top of the island I also took out the pond and then the other one that was like here somewhere so I'm just going to build some houses on top of there I'm not really too sure what I'm going to do there yet but I'll come up with some ideas at some point so I just wanted to quickly show this off I think it's quite nice to be able to see the progress that I'm making over time and I will make another map in probably like another month or two once I've got a few buildings and stuff around here then the island should look a little bit more progressed but anyway I'm going to start putting these maps away because they cause lag because of all of the item frames so I'm not really too sure what I'm going to do with all of the maps in the end but I'm sure I can find something to do with them so there's one more thing that I quickly want to show before I end this episode I can't remember if I ever showed this on camera but I made this witch farm in I think episode 2 or 3 and then I ended up not finishing it and I went ahead and built the mob farm instead. So if I quickly just break into here, it's extremely simple how this thing works. So you can see that there's some slabs around. And now the um, witches only spawn in front of this piston right here. And then they trigger the tripwire hook, get pushed along to this piston here. And then this piston pushes them down this hole. So you can see there's a little hole that goes down right there. So it took me about two minutes to build this thing. So the reason that I never finished this project in the episode and I decided to go and build the mob farm instead is because I couldn't be bothered making the perimeter around the farm. So whenever you build a witch farm, you always need the perimeter around it spawn proofing. Otherwise you just get loads of creepers and other mobs spawning in and they take up the mob cap. So if you come over here, you can see my AFK spot. So this is 30 blocks away from where the witches spawn. It's on the same level as well. And then if you go out 50 blocks in each direction, I've made a perimeter here. So you can see from above, this is a 100 wide square. So 100 by 100. And I've got to dig this out all the way down to bedrock to get the best rates for this farm. So I've got my boxes of tools here. So I've got most of my pickaxes are fully repaired. And then I've got all of my shovels as well. And a few more pickaxes in here. And I'm actually going to start doing this once I've finished this episode. So I'm just going to start mining all of this area out all of the way down to bedrock. And I think it'd look really good if I could time lapse this. If I had like a camera account or something that I could have up in the sky there. And then record me digging all this out all of the way down to bedrock. But I don't think you can do that on Xbox. I've looked it up on the internet and YouTube and stuff. And I just can't find any ways to do it. So if anyone actually knows how to do a third person time lapse on Xbox. Please let me know. Because I'd love to do loads of my projects like that. So you can see them getting built from a, like a third person point of view. But I don't know how to do it. So I always just kind of do jump cuts and stuff like that instead. And you might have seen this pink sheep jumping around here as well. So last night I came over to this witch hut. And I was just marking out the area around that I need to flatten out or dig all the way down to bedrock. And I just randomly saw a pink sheep wandering around over there. So I've had this world for 9 months now. And this is the first naturally spawned pink sheep that I found. So for now I've just tied it up here. I'm not really sure what to do with it just yet. I'll probably end up taking it back to the base and doing something with it there. So if anyone's got any ideas for what I could do with this, just let me know down in the comments as well. But anyway, that is where I'm going to be ending today's episode. So I'm going to go and set up a few beacons in the corners over here. And I'm going to start digging away at this thing. And I'll update you in the next episode to see how far down I can get. I don't think I'm going to get all of the way down to bedrock in that time. But hopefully I can make some decent progress. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like. And I will see you all next time.